Anyhow, it is uh, midweek and midday, so it must be time for uh, uh, Middays with Mark. Congressman Mark Pocan is with us, uh, representing the 2nd District of Wisconsin. He's the co-chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Pocan.house.gov is the website. His Twitter handle is rep, as in representative, rep Mark, M-A-R-K, Pocan, P-O-C-A-N. Congressman, welcome back. Hey, Tom. Thanks. Uh, glad to be here. Glad to have you with us. So uh, there's a lot of stuff in the news uh, from the, you know, Bernie's rolling out his Medicare for all today. The Supreme Court, uh, I, I was just looking through the Washington Post. I couldn't find it, but I'm seeing it on Twitter that the Supreme Court ruled that uh, Texas can go ahead with their uh, draconian voter suppression laws and that Neil Gorsuch was the deciding vote on that. Again, this is secondhand news. It's, I'm not, I can't corroborate that or verify that, but it appears to be the case. Um, the uh, Voter Fraud Commission or the Voter Suppression Commission went to New Hampshire. Why are these guys not talking about electronic voting machines and tabulators that can be hacked by anybody from Russians to 16-year-olds in their, in, in their you know, basement in Dubuque? Because they actually have no intention of dealing with problems with our voting systems. Instead, they're trying to create problems with our voting system so they can find more ways to make it harder for people to be able to vote. Um, and, you know, uh, let's face it, the guy who's running this commission has got a long, long record, not just of voter suppression, but Chris, Chris Kobach has made statements uh, going back to his radio show days where he talked about a, a rise in Latino immigration would lead to the ethnic cleansing of whites. Well, he was so, the author of SB 1020, wasn't he, in Arizona? Yeah, well, no, I, I'm not, not sure about that offhand. I couldn't say, Tom, but I know that uh, his record um, goes, uh, it, it's very much um, embedded in the alt-right uh, movement. Uh, he writes columns for Breitbach, uh, but it's, it's all about um, often the white race uh, and, and how it relates to voting. So, of course, um, whether it be you know something like the interstate cross check where you throw people off of ballots uh, simply because they have similar names to I, I think there was someone who was going to be testifying or will be testifying on this commission who um, is a, a gun advocate who's suggesting that uh, voters should have to go through the same background checks that you do to get to buy guns. Um, right. This is part of the brilliant ideas that are coming out of this commission when in reality we know uh, there's outside influence trying to hack into our voting machine companies and our election officials. Uh, we know that there's these efforts like the interstate cross-check that purge names off of ballots. We know there's uh, a bunch of laws, including in my home state of Wisconsin and other states, that make it harder for people to vote, whether it be photo ID laws or banning early voting. Uh, those are, if you really wanted to deal with voting, those would be real efforts. This commission is set up to basically justify the fact in Donald Trump's head that he didn't actually lose by three million votes. Yeah, uh, just just for your for your uh, bio computer here for your data bank, I'm looking on Wikipedia on the uh, on the entry on SB 1070 Arizona's uh, yeah. you know your papers please, particularly if you're Brown Law. Um, the major sponsor of and legislative force behind the bill was State Senator Russell Pierce. Um, uh, much of the drafting of the bill was done by Chris Kobach, a yeah. professor at the University of Missouri, Kansas City School of Law, and a little figure long associated with the uh, Federation for American Immigration Reform, who had written immigration-related bills in many other parts of the country. Pierce and Kobach had worked together on past legislative efforts regarding immigration. So Chris Kobach actually wrote that legislation. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and I, I was just confused for a second because I knew he wasn't from Arizona, and I was trying to think. Yeah, you know, I, you know me too. He was in Kansas, there, right? Very yeah. clear. Yep. So anyhow, what's what what is on your mind? What is oh, and, and I should let me just set this up. Uh, you're here with us for the hour. You will be taking calls from our listeners in, in just a minute. And, uh, you know, give us give us a shout if you want to talk to Congressman Pocan. So what do you in your mind? What is at the top of the news and what is at the top of what's happening here in Washington, D.C.? Well, I, you know, in uh, House uh, Representatives, it's not going to be a shock to you, Tom, but we're not really doing much. Um, we uh, are in our second week of debating uh, in a minibus uh, appropriations bill that, if you remember the news from last week, we just extended, um, did a continuing resolution for three months. So this is an utterly uh, futile attempt. The bill is going absolutely nowhere. But uh, if Paul Ryan can keep his members making a bunch of amendments to say they fought for this or fought for that, they can't muck up everything else. So this is a keep the children busy uh, process. <laughs> and I was uh, leading floor debate for a little bit yesterday on the uh, labor human services education portion of this. 
they can't govern, right? I mean, they've spent eight months trying to take people off of health care. They can't get that done. They want to figure out how to lower taxes for the richest in this country. They're not going to get that done. We're not going to let them. We're going to do our very best. Uh, but they don't have an agenda. So, you know, this is a, literally a treading water week so they can have some of their members feel like they've done something. And uh, that, that's very frustrating. Now, conversely, I, I think, you know, watching some of the stuff that's getting introduced and, you know, seeing Bernie introduce the Medicare for All in the Senate, I would feel uh, I, I didn't do my job if I didn't mention John Conyers has already introduced um, a very similar, there's slight differences, but a very similar bill in the House. And, Tom, we're up to 117 co-sponsors. That's over 60 percent of our caucus. So wow. while we're really glad that the Senate, for the, I think it might be the first time taking this bill up, and I think they've got 17. I might be wrong on that number, but I, I think it's 17 co-sponsors, which is great. Let's not forget uh, over 60 percent of the Democratic caucus in the House has already been on a very similar provision. The good news is that's what this whole health care debate has brought. If, if people don't like the ACA and they don't want to lose their health insurance like the Republicans are proposing, you know, it all comes down to the easiest way to do this was to make sure that we have some sort of a single payer system. And I, I think there's real momentum, especially going into 2018 and 2020, that this will be an issue people talk about. Yeah, it would be fascinating to go back to 1947 and see when Harry Truman proposed single payer health care, you know, the first serious proposal of it for the United States and and just see how, you know, how many of the Democrats supported it, how much how has the party changed since it was the FDR party to now as, you know, something else or, or actually I think it's going back to being the FDR our party. Right. Um, you're certainly right. leading that charge. Rick Nolan, who represents northern Minnesota, was elected in 1974 to Congress, served three terms, left, and then came back in my class in 2013. And he told me that they had a bill that did, you know, basically was the single payer bill back then, and it had six sponsors. So to get, right. see it go from six sponsors then to 117 now, including, you know, some of our leadership. I know there's some articles that, you know, Chuck Schumer and Nancy don't directly talk about the bill, but, you know, Joe Crowley, who is our caucus chair, uh, is on the bill. Um, you know, a lot of our, uh, obviously the Progressive Caucus, clearly, but we don't have um, 117 members. There's a lot of people who aren't Progressive Caucus members that are supporting this bill. So I think that's, you know, part of the story is it's great that the Senate is rolling this out. Bernie has been such a great advocate for it when he ran for president. But let's not forget that in the Democratic Caucus, in the House of Representatives, over 60 percent of the people are already on that bill. That That's just showing the direction that this country is and where the grassroots are. Yeah, that's remarkable. So uh, anything else you wanted to discuss or should we start picking up calls? Uh, just one real quick thing. I, I just saw this article that um, I think is good in the sense of, you know, when people are always looking for positive what's happening, mm -hmm. um, there have been six uh, elections, I think state legislative elections in the country, including two uh, just yesterday, where um, the districts have flipped from a district that Trump won to Democratic, and there are zero districts that have flipped from Democratic to Republican. And while we focused on some of the congressional races that were these deep red districts and there were big swings, but not enough to flip them blue, we're seeing it in closer Republican districts around the country. And I think that's important for people to know. That's a really positive sign of, I think, where we're heading in 2018. Yeah, so don't give up hope. Don't despair. Be, be, be of good cheer, uh, friends and neighbors. There's good things happening. It's just sometimes the mainstream media doesn't put them on the news while they're selling detergent. So yeah. I just want to make sure people hear what's actually happening on the ground. Very well said.